Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing blood stains, uh, how we do effective looking blood stains. Um, so I'm in the middle of my 24 hour army project and I thought, hey, here's another chance to make a separate video in the middle uh, with a very specific topic of something I often see people do very wrong. So let's talk it through. Here I have my butcher and my slaughter master uh, from, God, look at that mold line. That is just terrible, but it's not going away now. Uh, here I have my butcher and my slaughter master from my 24 hour army ogre project. And they're pretty much done, but that robe, that, uh, their, their little butcher's apron, well, that's just looking a little bit too clean. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blood stain these bad boys up. So, I'm just gonna do one of them here on camera. I'll move this guy aside and we'll work on him, this giant hunk of metal. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I often see people do with blood stains is just take some blood for the blood god and just slap it on. The problem is, is that it doesn't, like that technical paint doesn't actually look like dried blood, it's fresh blood where they'll just use red paint, but blood doesn't dry bright red. Um, now on white, it's gonna lighten up a little, but we're gonna let the paint do that for us. Like blood, when it dries, uh, dries very dark because of the oxidation. So uh, we're gonna try to replicate that. So we need to create some random patterns. So on my palette, I have, let me scoot this into frame here. Doo -doo. I have some whole red, and some black brown, very dark colors. So I'm actually gonna start with just a little bit of that black brown, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stipple in some dots and spray pattern here and there. I'm not trying to actually do the whole thing. I'm just trying to create some little shadows and areas of darkness. Okay, so we just start with something small like that. Now the reason we're doing that is because when we apply the next step, we want there to be some tonal variation in what we're doing, okay? Uh, that is to say, when I jump to the red, I don't want it to be just this blank red over white. So this is my initial sketch of sort of where the center parts of the blood stains are gonna be. Because if the blood is really built up, if there's a lot more of it, if a big spurt hit right here, then what happens is we would see uh, we would see this part be darker and more intense. So now we're going to grab some of that whole red. We're going to work over and beyond what we did before. Okay, so we just kind of stipple that on there. We go into some areas that we didn't before and that's okay. Okay. And we're gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna actually switch to a thin brush because we're gonna do another fun thing here. Maybe while somebody was struggling to go in the pot, maybe they uh, maybe they fought back a little bit. So we'll grab some, some of that black brown and we'll just mix it with a little bit of the whole red. And right here on the center of his apron, let's do a little handprint. So we'll just do a little thumb. Right. And there we've got a little little fun handprint where somebody was trying to fight back a little. Then we're gonna go over and we're gonna re-stipple some of these areas. We'll make a few new ones. We'll make some tiny splatters with the, the little brush. 
I'm trying to be very random. Blood patterns have a, like, a reason for them. That is to say, you can, you know, we've all watched Dexter or seen CSI or something. Uh, so, like, there are generally, there's generally logic behind blood stains. However, things that get repeatedly bloodstained, it's not a murder scene, right? That is to say, this thing is, is, looks like it does, because this guy has been just murdering people like crazy, throwing people in the pot, cooking them up. So we just kind of stipple over our work, we carry out some little dots. The key is you don't want to go too heavy. Like, you want enough of the white to still let it contrast. Okay. Alright. So, got a nice little stain there. Now, what we can do is now we can get out our blood for the blood god. And what we can do is have some fresh stains. So we take our blood for the blood god. Get a little bit of that on the end of our brush here. We'll have a few fresh drops here and there. Sorry. We don't cover everything, just little bits here and there. The other thing we do with our Blood for the Blood God is we can pick a couple areas where it's rather intense, like here. We can just take a little streak right down. Let's put a little bit on that chain where maybe some viscera. We can just do some some streaking like that. The other thing I'm going to do here while I'm on camera is I've got this, these little meat racks. So we're going to just color them in with a little bit here on the end. Just like that. So that they kind of get the sense that they're a little shiny. That they're a little bit of like fresh meat. Just on one side. Okay, and now what we've got is a nicely bloody stained dripping robe. However, if we really want to make this, one of the keys to doing finishing effects like this is they have to feel organic and there's a problem here. The problem is, is that this thing still looks too clean overall and that's all right because something like this, he hasn't cleaned it in a long time. So we're going to take a little skeleton horde contrast, but you could use sepia wash, you could use anything like that. Okay. Just the skeleton horde works pretty well for my purposes here, but again, you could use anything. And then down at the bottom here, toward the bottom of the robe, over everything, we're just going to kind of draw this in a downward motion. So it looks like we've got a little bit of staining and stuff like that on the bottom. We're going to let that kind of dry a little bit, but I'll take a little bit of my black brown that I already had from earlier, mix it into my skeleton hoard. Stipple that some on the bottom. A little bit more. And then we get a nice stain on the bottom of the robe. Now, if we want, we can also take a little bit of other skeleton hoard and just very lightly we can do stuff like just kind of stain it in some random places too. Just again, stipple it around so it looks like he got splattered by, you know, random dirt. Just stuff like that. So there's a little bit of other kind of sweat staining and stuff like that going on to it. I doubt this guy keeps his, his, uh, his butcher's thing here very clean. So there we go. 
Now we have the uh, we have the uh, a much more organic, natural looking blood stain. Of course, if you want to go farther, you can go farther. You can go nuts with it, as a matter of fact. But I, I think less is usually more. Um, I like the weathering over the top just because the effect it provides. Uh, but there you go. That's how we do our blood staining get a nice effect. You can see how I still got some shine there. I've got old dried blood. I have lots of variation. I have little streaks. I have my little handprint. I've got a narrative being told right there on his robe and it only took a few minutes. So there you go. That's, uh, that's doing blood staining. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, if you have suggestions for future videos, feel free to drop those down in the comments. As always, that's very much appreciated. But uh, I do thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.